Thank you, Sesat. Good morning, everyone. So let us wait until they take the photograph. I'm Laura Kaplan. I am Cooperation and Development Manager at Lacking. I prepared an informative summary on actions and projects, events, programs we have organized in 2023. To start, I want to, I want to tell you about our events. We constantly work in ongoing improvement of these spaces and the objective is to maintain the standards of excellence and the relevance of the discussions and training activities and everything that takes place during these two weeks in the year. We pay special attention to the feedback survey to try to understand and improve things and in these events so these really are a contribution to the community in terms of value. These are some of the things we did last year. We implemented Zoom events to incorporate networking in the platform for those who are following us remotely. We also incorporated experts from the community who participate in designing the agenda together with LACNIC staff so that these spaces are increasingly interesting and so that we can have the standpoint of experts from the community. We also work to towards professionalizing the trade show. We have a larger number of sponsors now and a larger num amount of uh, more booths as well. Sometimes these are organizations that come to tell us about their work. We continue working in uh, community grants. We have a workshop we organized on personal brand and networking for those who are trainees here. And last year, one of the things that we discussed during the events these are the topics we discuss IPv6 only networks, leasing for IP addresses. We also spoke about blocking and fair share. So these were incorporated into the 2023 agenda. We also had some record numbers. We had a record in person participation in Merida last year in Mexico in the month of May. We're growing a lot in terms of participation, and hopefully, this event today is has a greater turnout. In the month of October in Brazil, we had a large participation of the local community. 50, more than 50 percent were people from Brazil, from that area, and from that country. So this is one of the purposes of having itinerant meetings and reaching out to the different communities. We're also working on sponsors and sponsorships. Last year we had 30 sponsors, 14 were with us for the first time. We also increased in terms of what we had collected. Of course, during the pandemic, we stopped having in-person events. We then recovered and we continue to grow. I would like to refer to another topic. This applies to the spaces where that we share both virtually and in person. Last year, we expanded the ethics committee. This was a larger process of improving the code of conduct of the LACNI community. You're aware that we have a code of conduct that st determines the standards for coexistence and things that are unacceptable for the community. So what we did was to do a public uh, query. We included topics about what people from the community thought. We received 172 replies and the acceptance was greater than 85 percent. This included the fact that appropriate use of the facilities, preventive suspension for in the case of reporting some improper behavior, and then the issue of 
expanding the ethics committee. Regarding the ethics committee, we incorporated someone from the community who is Natalia Sautchuk and someone from LACNIC staff, namely Florencia Bianchi, who is a human resources manager. Last, from last year to this year, we changed the person from the board. It used to be Esteban Lecano, and now we have someone else. Now, we continue working widely in capacity building. The campus continues to grow. We continue maintaining and focusing on the standards of excellence. So we ask those who participate in courses to please complete your feedback forms. We had a very positive feedback. We're happy to see that you are satisfied with the activities we offer in the campus in 2023. We had 16 courses, we had 25 editions, we also increased in the number of students. We had about 10,000 registered and 7,000 received training. Something else regarding the campus, that we have three new facilitators as trusted representatives. We have two different types of courses, the basic self-managed courses and more advanced courses with facilitators. We are now expanding our team of facilitators who are helping us with these advanced courses. We are very happy to have this wonderful team with so many professionals that support us with the activities of the campus. And the final topic regarding the campus and one of the things that were most expected is one of the first specialization activities in 2023. We completed the specialization ISP network operations and we had the first awards of the basic and intermediate level and many people who completed the advanced course towards the end of the year and this year have reached the three levels and are now ready to take the certification exam. We also worked in applied research over the past two years. We have been working on a program collaborating with universities and research centers in the region. Last year, we renewed three of the agreements involving collaboration to continue developing research work together with universities and LACNIC. What we do is contributing with technical support. Sometimes we establish contacts, we provide tools, and work with the researchers in the work which will then be published. We'll be publishing these, and we they publish them too, and we're going to provide dissemination to these papers. As you can see on the map, this, we try to cover different countries of the region as well as different topics which are of interest to the community. The FRIDA program this year will be celebrating our 20th anniversary. We received 233 applications for projects. These are a large amount, so we really have to, the difficult task of selecting the project proposals in 2023. Well, we have an external jury of professionals that does a task of selecting the different projects. The jury selected 10 projects, eight in the form of subsidies and two in the option as awards from eight different countries. And one of the new things is that in 2023, we incorporated into FRIDA a uh, non-financial technical support option because we often receive very good projects that are very well assessed, but because we have limited funds, 
these end up not being included. So what we did was to provide a non-financial support line, which allows us to incorporate six further projects. So overall, we had 14 projects that were subsidized, which we supported providing different tools, access to courses, and offered different funding options so that we could, they could continue working with more projects. And finally, let me tell you that we're also working on continuing with the development of the regional community. We want to incorporate a more wider points of view. What we try to trying to focus on is to promote that all those who come for the first time to a LACNIC event continue participating. They continue keeping in touch that they should take the event as an opportunity to then expand their knowledge with a course on the campus or participate in the different webinars or they can also participate in the policy development process and come to these spaces. So working together with the develop cooperation and development area. Last year, 36 percent of the people who participated in some of these spaces also took part in one other activities. So from the 8,274 people who participated in capacity building activities or others also joined in two or more activities in the course of the year. So we invite you to continue taking advantage of the different options that LACNIC offers. So that would be all. Thank you very much. And I hope you really enjoy this week. Thank you very much.